come in today. One of our members who's been gone a while is back today, and he texted me yesterday and said he had a song that I might like, and I listened to it. I did like it. So, brother <clears throat> Garrett Walker, brother, brother, well, it, it sounds funny to say brother Walker, but you are a brother in Christ. So come on, Absolutely. brother Walker. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Bless us with the song. Let's welcome Garrett back to grace, Woo! shall we? Amen.
All we need is to look into his life. Yes, yes. All we need is to look into God's light. that I don't come here just so I can sing. I knew that enough of that. I come here to hear the food and get the get the word. Amen. And as I always say, it's an hour away, but a church that is alive is worth the drive. <laughs> All right, it's so great to see a new family. Thanks. Amen. Thank you, Terry. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Say, listen, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Say one more thing. Say this for me. I'm glad to be in church. To be in church. Amen. And I say I'd rather be here than in the best hospital in the metroplex. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to revisit the subject we began last week from the book of Job. Amen. Job's biography reads like this. Job chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. There was a man in the land of Uz, Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God, and he eschewed. Now, we don't say I eschewed anything. We, that means he avoided evil, King James Version. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Here was his portfolio, if you will, representing his wealth. His substance was 7,000 sheep, three, it goes on, I won't go, go into all of it, but camels and oxen and female donkeys. He, the Bible says he was the greatest of all the men in the East. That means he was the richest. Rich. Yeah, Isn't it interesting to be great today, either because of some talent you have or possessions that you own? Could get a witness. Amen. That's the way society is. That's Amen. the way it is. So we know <clears throat> from Job account from the very first thing we read that he was a very rich man. And uh, he was the richest in the land, had a very prosperous family. Now, his troubles begin in Job chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 6. It's very, 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 very apparent. There was, verse 6, here, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Now, let me stop and say this. Someone, could, if you, you are not, and I don't want to insult anyone, but if you're not that uh, literate in the Word of God, you say, wait a minute, sons of God, I thought he only had one. Now, you see, the Muslim faith says this. When you talk about God, I've talked to many, most of the numerous people, and and they say Jesus was just a prophet like Adam, Moses, Elijah. He was just the last prophet. No, he was the son of the living God. Amen. When it says the sons of God came here, it is in anywhere else in the Bible, it is referring to angels. There's a place in the Bible where it says that the sons of God came down and married human beings. And from that we seem to have these giants that appear in the Bible as it were. Now, so if the Bible says the time came when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also among them. It would seem that the sons of God, the angels showed up and we presume it was in the court of heaven. They came before the Lord God at his throne and Satan showed up. And for the purpose of time, I'm going to summarize the rest of the story, and then we'll take some lessons from it. The Bible says Satan showed up for this meeting, and we don't have the full conversation verbatim as to what was said, but it must have included these ideas. The Lord says, Satan, what have you been doing? Well, he said, I've been going up, up and down the earth, walking up and down. Well, nothing not wrong walking around on the earth. So then the next thing, the, the Lord says, have you considered my servant Job? Yes. Well, wait a minute. How did walking up and down the earth bring in Job? Mm -hmm. There's part of this narrative that's not recorded. Logical people would assume, right? Yes. Obviously, the devil also said, I've been looking for a righteous person. This is dreadful English. God forgive me for saying it, but 
He could have said it like this, there ain't one. Uh-huh. That goes against my degree of English, but it sure states it what he said, basically. Yep. He couldn't find one righteous person. And to which Jesus, the Lord responded, have you considered my servant Job? Now that's what we have recorded. That middle part must have taken place because we know what the Lord said. He's upright and he references God. So we know that Satan going around and said, well, there's not a flawless man on earth. And then God says, well, what about Job? And he said, well, now the only reason he serves you is because of the benefits he gives you. And I want to say something right here that I heard. I heard another minister, a very prominent minister, say recently on TV, and he was so right. He said, some of the, some of the presentation of giving has a, my words, and his words too, a, 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 a selfish motive. I'm going to give to a certain cause, so I can get rich. Amen. You know, to give the Lord God, it, it says in the Bible, to Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you and bless those who curse you. Amen. So when we give to and sometimes we just stop and say, Am I giving an offering to go bless Israel because I want to bless them or I want to bless me? Yeah. Amen. And don't mm-hmm. shout me down because yeah. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. All right. So we have a balance, a right heart, and that God wants us to give with a willing heart if we never get it in return on our investment. Can you amen. say amen? amen. All right. Amen. Having said that, Job said, Well, if you take away the hedge from, from Job, uh, God said, uh, Job said, If you, uh, it was said to, 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 to the devil by the Lord, if you, you know, it, I'm not going to, he, I've got a hedge around him. And the devil says, well, if you take the hedge away, and that's all understood, yeah. then he'll curse you to your face. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So the Lord said, okay, here's the deal. You can touch his substance. You can touch his portfolio mm-hmm. and his family and so on, but don't touch him. Amen. Mm-hmm. So Satan perpetrates evil against the old substance. Uh-huh. His servants are kidnapped. Fire consumes his sheep and, 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 his, and the rest of the some of the servants, the Chaldeans stole his camels. A tornado came and killed his sons and daughters. He was wiped out. Yes. Yes. Job's response to this tragedy was, and listen carefully to what I'm going to say now. The Lord giveth, yes. the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many of you heard that stated at funerals? They misquoted it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Still, so you holy and quiet, but I'm going to give you a logical thing here. God's not going around killing babies Amen. in abortion. Yes, sir. People right. did that. Yes. Yes. Amen. So they say, oh, God is sovereign. He's controlling everything. Well, I like what Brother Hagin said. If God's in control, he sure made a mess of it. Uh-huh. Amen. If God's in control, why did he stop that wild man yes. and all his crusaders from Russia from invading Ukraine and killing innocent people. Amen. Right. Amen. God is in control of this universe, but He also gave men something called a free choice. Amen. You have the choice. That's right. And then no, I'll quote Brother Hagin one more time because he, I was in his school and I just I hear, a lot of, I hear a lot of things he said. He said he got into a real raucous of a discussion but one man said, God is sovereign as though He controls. See, sovereign means above. It doesn't mean controlling. But this man said, whatever happens is God's will. God's got all power. Brother Hagin said, well, if God's got all power, why didn't he make you pay tithe? Oh. <laughs> got to oh. He clipped that, didn't he? Yeah, I guess so. So, you know what? But here's the deal. Job did not know the rest of the story. Job was not aware of the conversation the Lord had, God had had with the devil. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Jesus said, I'm come. Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. Anything in your life that steals and kills and destroys, attribute that to Satan's handiwork. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. Yes. I remember someone said years ago, a certain preacher's wife, you know, the pastor of that Northside Church, said she got up and prayed one day, said, I want you all to pray the Lord give, give me cancer so I can suffer for Jesus. <laughs> no. Poor girl. Well, she heard some erroneous teaching yes, she did. about suffering. Yes. Satan is the author. The Bible says Jesus went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And I'd say cancer is a definite oppression, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. But moving along, I'm, I'm on the side journey here. Yes, sir. But here, <clears throat> Job was unaware of the deal. And based upon his knowledge, he said, well, the Lord's given. He put the best interpretation on what happened to him, honoring God. Then, then there's a second meeting. Uh, that happens. Chapter 2, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves. The same conversation happens again. And Satan said, well, if I can torture, he raises the bed, if you will. If I can torture him physically, he'll curse you to, his, to your face. Uh-huh. God grants him permission and Satan afflicts Job with unimaginable boils. Yes. 
And I, I don't know if you've ever had a boil. I had a boil right there years ago when I was in grade school. I still remember it. It was very painful. Can you imagine your body being covered with those horrendous things? You sit down, you move, your clothes touch them. It says he, he got an ash, he covered himself with ashes. Miserable. Misery personified. Now this is Job's wife. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, Man, uh oh. <laughs> Job verse two, chapter two, verse nine. She got saved the whole best. She said, Why don't you just curse God and die? I'm not right. <laughs> Wasn't that profound? <laughs> Job says, You food, you speak like a foolish woman. That's right. You Amen. speak like a foolish woman. Amen. Temporarily. Amen. Temporarily. <laughs> I heard one minister say, Well, the whole thing came on Job because of his wife. His wife had nothing to do with it. God allowed Satan to do it. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to stop here and Why? say some things. When a husband or a wife is going through a trial or facing a situation that includes misery and suffering, husbands and wives should edify and help lift up one another. Amen. 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 I've been, I started this church in Arlington, in Arlington uh, Hilton Hotel. I've been up and down and backwards, forwards so many times with people you can't even imagine. I can take, we bought people cars and two weeks later they left. One day, I could just go all kinds of weird things. Some of the members had a fire in their house. And so knowing they didn't have, you know, you never have enough insurance to cover right. everything. Right. So we got them, took them an offering, and they got $1,500, which was pretty good. Two weeks later, we're leaving the church. One of my members came and said, I want my money back. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh, we love your pastor. We're behind you. That means two weeks they're gone. Uh, <laughs> Way much. <laughs> well, at any rate, my wife is my comforter. Amen. 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 As I said last week, you know, there's, what, what do you call these people? Poles? Bipolar. Bipolar. Well, I'm sometimes <laughs> tripolar. That's right. I don't have any poles I have. I mean, I, I, it's, I'm, I'm a very, you know, Doberman type. <clears throat> you know, quick. They just turn on real quick. Here's the level. Here's coming right now. Hold steady. We'll make it. Money didn't come in. What in what name are we going to What are we going to do? She over the past 26 years. Can you believe we've married? You see, you're still. I wish I was as nice looking as you. I've heard you ever this year. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's not as compliment. Isn't it? But she keeps me level. Straight. You, your husband should build and wife should help each other in a time of crisis. Amen. 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 Your enthusiasm is overwhelming me here now. All right, now. <laughs> but it's good for you. <laughs> We've got you, pal. Now, listen to this. <clears throat> you know, in your trial, your closest friends can't abandon you. But your husband and wife should never abandon you. Amen. Do you know the Bible says in 17, 17 Proverbs, a friend loves at all times? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, earthly trials can birth serious depression. I mean, I, and, and now, now listen to this. Job 3.1. Job cursed his day. In other words, he was saying, I wish I'd never been born. Mm. So I read a story about a, a little child in the grade school came home from church cussing. The, people, the parents said, what on? Well, I learned it in Sunday school. What on earth? Well, the teacher got up and said, Job cursed. The day he was born. <laughs> she just remembered the curse part. <laughs> then he said, Why died I not from the womb? Would you say he was depressed, folks? Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, put that, I'm going to use a nice little word here, but put that statement in juxtaposition with what God said about a perfect man who wish you love God and avoided evil. That perfect man got depressed. Listen, the devil's a busy devil. And when someone ever did, oh, the devil's stupid. Well, that's a belittered Christian. That's right. He's, He's mastered the art of deceiving and hurting, that's ruining right. people's lives. That's Amen. right. And then that, that trial can be so severe on you, you can say, man, I'm having to reach up to touch bottom. Amen. That's down. Yes, sir. You know, you've heard me tell the story about one Christian said to another, how's it going? Man, he said, I can just go from one mountaintop to another. What on earth? Watch your secret. What is the deal? Well, he said, sometimes I'm on top of the mountain. Sometimes the mountain's on top of me. That's, right. <laughs> That's the God's truth. That's right. Yeah. Amen. 
Yeah. Earthly yeah. trials can bring depression. Yeah. Then don't let the devil tell you you're lost and you're unsaved because you hit a low spot in your spiritual life. Amen. That's right. Amen. Job 17, 1, my breath is corrupt, my days are extinct, the graves are ready. He said, I've got one foot on a banana peel and the other in the graves, the old climbers were saying. Amen. Very godly people can experience fear. He says, the thing, here's another one, Job 3, 25, the thing which I fear has come upon me. Mm -hmm. The thing which I fear, another erroneous teaching, I'm going to correct it if nobody hears it but us. Your fear is not going to bring on the dev devil's action. You may open the door. But your fear, Job got, was in fear because of what the devil had done and did and God allowed him to do. His fear didn't bring that on. Satan brought it on. Yes. And of course, you know, I, I, how many people are not afraid of anything? Well, I've been around people. Now I'm not afraid of rattlesnakes. One bit. Ooh, not Lord one shred. I'll be, oh, oh my Lord, I'm not. No. No, I know. I can take a shotgun and stop it. But I didn't know this. My father, I used to hunt rattlesnakes and so forth. Out on the oil lease where oh, my yeah. uncle lived and so forth. And, we, and so, you know, I was the head of snakes, but we shot them and then we held them. Yeah. We took up snakes and serpents. Yeah, yeah. See? But I know about rattlesnakes is this they don't bother you if you don't bother them. I've come that close to one and he didn't strike me, so I let him live. He showed me mercy, I showed him mercy. <laughs> They're not aggressive. If, now, if you, on the side of the Rocky Hill, if you shoot out of a miss and stir up the nest or whatever, they're going to turn around and defend themselves. Well, we had a we had a young man in this church that was working with the youth, and he told, well, our Devin, he was scared of spiders. Well, God help. He needs to drink some more Pepsi or something. <laughs> My boy scared of spiders. I used to catch them in yards and bring them home. That's just boys, okay? And by the way, this society is trying to Make effeminate our men. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. This woke stuff. I never forget what my uncle said when he take me out on his leash. I spend the night with him out there. He's an oil pumper, and I spend the night on that leash. No running water. When the chickens went to bed, we went to bed. They opened the windows at night. All they have was sheets for cover. He said, "Boy, by the morning you'll be pulling for cover." Well, I didn't pull much. It was hot out there. But when we go on the leash. Where he lived, they lived out in the bushes, out on the lease there, out in, uh, near Windows. He'd say this, boy, you're out here now where the men are men and the women are proud of it. That's right. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the way it used to be. Right. Men should have temper. They should have a lot more drive than women. And while I'm at it, I'll just go ahead and make a clean sweep here. May God help our society of good people, and I still believe the normal, real people are in the majority, that God help us to disallow men who were born men to all of a sudden decide they're women and they're going to compete against girls in sports and the women can't keep up with them. God didn't make it that way. That's right. God made the men to protect the women. Amen. 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 The Bible says about man, he that doesn't care for his own household is worse than an infidel. Amen. And didn't say the woman was be the leader to protect the family. The man should. Amen. So you stand up. Don't be. Don't let somebody intimidate you. All right. right. Men are men. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to have temper. We're supposed to get stirred up when people touch our family and so forth and so on. Absolutely. Amen. 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 The Bible says God created Adam and Eve and nothing in, in my words, nothing in, in between. between. Amen. You either, you either is or you ain't. ain't. Amen. About that's right. To be or not to be, that's the question. <laughs> well, you are, you are what you were, are because the way you were born. Now, do we hate those people? No, we pray for God to Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Certainly we do. We're not. We're not. We don't hate. We're no, not. We are and they even they even have a word, homophobic. I don't know exactly what that means because who's afraid of whom? There. Did you ever get that figured out? I'm not scared of those people. Mm -hmm. I, I I I love them. I pray for them. That's right. Yeah. But they're not my dearest friends. Oh. We, there's a difference in us, you know. Right. Yeah. I honor God. He says your lifestyle is wrong. The Bible says it's wrong it's for wrong. men and men to live That's with right. men and women so forth. Amen. Amen. Well, Amen. I'm getting so much response, I'm going to move on. Move <laughs> on. <laughs> Listen to this. 
Trials can bring serious mood swings. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, here's one joke. Now, now I'm talking about that perfect man who loved God. He was the, he was the, he was the poster boy for the perfect one for Satan to get after. Look here. Job 10 1. My soul is weary of life. Amen. Have you ever been that low? You think, Lord, I don't know if I can live another day. This Amen. is so horrible. This, this, this attack of Satan. Yes, sir. And then he makes this brilliant statement. Man, 14, 1, man that is born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Yes. When you've got boils, when you've lost every possession you have on earth but your life, you can absolutely have a serious mood swing. Amen. But you're not lost. That's Amen. right. You're still Amen. God's child. Yes, sir. Amen. And He still loves you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, in final desperation, Job declares his faith. He says, we just, I'm going to back up and read something here. Back. Let me just, let me, let me talk about one of these comforters. Now, these are comforters. Everybody say comforters. But oh, well, we know the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Yes, Jesus sir. said, yeah, I'll go to heaven, I'll send back the Holy Spirit. He'll be a comforter to you. Amen. And so, when people come along, I had a man who came to this church for a little while until he figured out that his theology was wrong and he had to, he had to leave and that's good that he did because he didn't fit here. But he asked me one day, he called me and said, is Jesus God? Well, I knew where he was going. He's trying to say there's only one, one creature up there, God. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's the biggest mystery of the Godhead. But when the Bible says Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, Amen. sitting, Amen. Jesus is not sitting on his own hand. Yeah. You're going to get a witness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And on and on. Yes, sir. If you go through the epistles from our readings from the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father and so forth. So there, the, the triune God is there. Well, now, let's go over here to chapter 4 of uh, Job. Chapter 4. Let's talk about these, the, the, this situation here. Behold, thou hast instructed. Now, he, this is Eliphaz. Everybody say Eliphaz. Eliphaz. Has anybody had any children named Eliphaz? No. no. Unusual. No. One of them's named Bildad. The other's <laughs> named Zophar. This is my son Zophar. Wow. That'd be a, that'd be a stigma, wouldn't it? No. Whoa. Behold, thou hast. Here's what Eliphaz. Uh, comforter number one. Thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. Now listen to this. Here's the, here's, the, here's the great comforter. But now it has come upon thee, and thou faintest. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Mm. Think about that. Yes. In other words, you've taught all this. Now you've got it, big boy. How do you like that? Can you imagine comforts like that? There are going to be times that you have to turn deaf ear to so-called friends. Mm. Amen. Uh -huh. Someone will say this, well, what's your situation? That's exactly what the way my mother was right before she died. Amen. That's comforting. Yes, sir. No, turn the deaf ear to these people that try to discourage you and tell you that some evil you've done has brought this upon you. Mm -hmm. Something that happened in 1964, God's rewarding you now. No, if you ask God to forgive you, you're forgiven. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Now, in final desperation, Job says, well, I'm at the answer is what he says. Just sum it all up right here. Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. The biggest secret to your going through a trial and my going through a trial is the fact that we trust God. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 That's the hardest part. Yeah. I mean, when you're just following and you can't see the shore and you don't know which way to go, my father said years ago, and, and I, I was a witness to this, we'd be fishing down at Galveston, and in that ship town, all of a sudden, a fog would come in, as the poet said, on little cat's feet. The fog settled in. And Papa said, now listen, it's a beautiful. What is that, Papa? Those big ships out there, they're dropping their anchors. They don't know which way to go, but they're dropping anchors, and so they won't move to the fog lifts. Amen. So if you're in a fog today, you hold steady. That's right. right. And I'm going to give you some verses in just a minute that will help you hold steady in the Amen. storm. Now, don't, if you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Hold steady till the fog lifts. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. He thought the, the end was near, and it was, but he refused to curse God and die. That's right. Amen. Amen. Finally, toward the end, 
It ends like this. Job wound up with a new family, 